For this week's assignment, we are to disassemble and reassemble the Taurus 856 double action revolver. The revolver is, the action is open, the revolver is empty, clear, and safe to be worked on. And again, I'm going to be doing a full disassembly and reassembly. So I'm going to show the angle from the tabletop view showing the table as I'm working on disassembling the firearm. So I have the tools that were shown necessary. I also have gloves because anytime you're going to be going in the internal or working with a firearm period, cleaning it, disassembling, anything like that, and there's a chance to deal with lead or hazardous materials, things like that from the firearm, it's best to have your hands protected. I also have my eye protection on. And for the tools, I have the screwdrivers, the proper size screwdrivers. I have my hammer, roll pan punch, angle pliers and needle nose pliers. I have the paper clips, which are necessary for some of the internal parts of the firearm. Angle pliers and needle nose pliers, as well as a magnetic tray to hold the small pieces like the springs and screws that will be removed. I'm gonna start by removing the grip. The grip is removed by first removing the roll pin that is in the at the bottom of the grip. This retains it with a magnet, so I just leave that there. And remember that it is there. After the roll pin is removed, you just pull on the grip to remove the rubber grip. After the grip is removed, the side plate has to be removed. The screws are two different size screws, so I have, you wanna use the proper size screwdriver for the screws. This screw is a little bigger, so I have a bigger screwdriver that properly fits. And this screw also holds the spring and detent, so I'm going to go on and let that come out. Very small. The detent with the spring still inside it, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna place this back inside the screw and leave that together as I put it in a tray. Now with all three of the screws removed, the side plate can be removed. The side plate is removed by using the handle of the hammer to tap on the frame. side plate just comes off like that. You don't want to pry the plate off. You do want to tap it the way I just did this. And now we are at the inside of the firearm. And with the internals exposed, the first thing I'm going to do is cock the hammer back. So I can expose this hole in the hammer strut. Then I'm going to place one of my paper clips inside the hole there in the hammer strut with the paper clip inside that hole i'm going to pull the trigger which releases the strut with the spring attached i'm going to put the hammer strut over to the side with the paper clip in it holding the spring and the strut together. Um, now I am going to remove the cylinder. And with the cylinder and yoke removed, I'm just gonna Leave this together, put this off to the side. Now I am going to remove the firing pin 
retainer pin and the firing pin and spring. I use my angled pliers to pull the firing pin retainer pin out. I have to pull back on the cylinder release to get the hammer all the way back. So then I can get the, this is the firing pin and the spring. I'm gonna put the spring back onto the firing pin and put it over here as well. With the firing pin, the firing pin spring and detent removed. Now I am going to pull back on the cylinder release so I can pull the hammer back and pull the trigger to get to this hole here in the trigger strut and trigger spring. Now I'm going to remove the strut, the trigger strut by hitting this using my punch to tap this pan and it's just a light you don't need to put much pressure there to get the trigger strut and spring removed the paper clip will retain it so I'll set this over to the side as well now I'm going to remove the hammer with it already being back I should just be able to Pull it off of this leg and with the hammer this is the sear surface but I don't need to disassemble this so I'm just going to put this off to the side as well with the hammer removed now I'm going to remove the hand the hand is right here sitting in the recess and there is a spring and detent so I just keep my hand there to make sure I don't lose anything and pull lightly and as you can see when I pull that up luckily I had my hand there because the detent and spring did come out and luckily it just I had my hand back there so I just popped back hit my hand fell there so I'm gonna go on and put this over to the side as well and this is the hand removed. Now I'm going to remove the trigger. Oh. Got it off the leg right there. And there's the trigger removed. This is the transfer bar. And with that sliding out, I'll go on and remove that. With the trigger and transfer bar removed, I'm now going to remove the cylinder stop. Had to work with it a little bit, but I was able to remove it. Now I'm going to remove the screw and cylinder release. And the screw, I'll go ahead and put the screw over here. And I just put the thumb piece in with it just to know that it's the screw for that now what has to be removed is the bolt oh boy. I didn't want to have that screw pop out it did pop out but I know where it is so just one second the tutorial video did say how important it was to watch that screw that spring luckily I was able to find it without much of a problem so i'm going to go on and keep this spring with this bolt and put it over my tray and now the firearm is fully disassembled fully disassembled you could do 
detailed, full detail cleaning. Anything that needs to be repaired or replaced could be done from this point.